My agenda is where the rubber meets the road for my next actions and where I populate what I'm going to do the next day. I use the term agenda because I don't like scheduling things down to the minute. Now, what happens when I schedule thing down, things down to the minute is that uh, something urgent comes in the door. I feel like when I don't get that thing done that I've been unproductive. Agenda gives me a little more flexibility. Something doesn't get done. It just gets moved to the next day. Now, there are certain components of an agenda uh, that do require actual time blocking. You know, I have meetings or whatever, and I'll do that. And then I, when I find the gaps, that's when I start populating with my next actions. Here's how I do that. Now, normally I would be working from the next day, so I would actually bring my right click that and bring it into the sidebar so I can work from there. I have a little quick checklist that walks me through creating an agenda. So the first thing I do is I type agenda the way I already have here. Uh, and then I'll review my calendar. This is a link to my Google Calendar. I'm not going to take you over there right now. Um, but what I do is that I um, will create all of the, the notes that I need for logging my meetings or lessons. Let's imagine that tomorrow um, at 10 a.m. I have a coaching with my good friend Tom Smith. Um, and I create this outside the agenda. You'll notice I'm not in the same bullet point. I do that because I'm actually going to want to take notes for Tom's uh, meeting here in that in this bullet point. Um, so I want to have that bullet point separate. And then I actually block reference it in here and make it a to do. So when I'm populating the agenda from the calendar, I take I create the events outside the agenda and reference them in the agenda. This isn't so that I you know can click it and jump to the block. Um, obviously, there's not really any major point to doing that since they're on the same page. I could do the same thing from the same page otherwise. But the idea here for me is it's a uh, it's a sort of database optimization thing. I don't have this uh, idea that I have a coaching with Tom Smith living in more than one location. That is living in one location and then referenced from others. So if anything does get changed. Um, it'll, you know, it'll all still refer back to this. It also helps if I should happen to be over on my agenda page and I'm looking at past agendas and seeing what's gotten done and what hasn't, I can click here and that'll bring me to the notes that I actually took. So there's that. I have had the question. I think it's a legitimate one. Why do you put your times in brackets too? I don't know. I over bracket. Uh, I do it because I figure there might be some reason in the future that I would need to filter to something. I always figure I'm going to over filter um, or over uh, tag so that I can filter or query things in the future. Maybe someday in the future, I'll need to know why something happened. You know, the, the list of things that have happened at 10 o'clock in the morning. Uh, if I do, well, I'm all set. Uh, and that's sort of my thinking is that uh, I don't know for sure. And since I don't know for sure, I don't know I have a use case for it yet, but I would rather be over tagged and not use it than under tagged and then need it down the road. So, and let's also imagine then that at two o'clock, I teach a voice lesson to Jane Doe. So she's one of my singing students, we'll say. Um, so I have a voice lesson with her. And then I would also block reference that back into my agenda. So that first step is looking at my calendar and populating those things. And I'm on, like I say, on the agenda, I make them to do's, um, but they just reference back to these notes here. So I have done that. So we'll mark off, uh, review the calendar. What this implies for me then is that I'm going to have some time. I get up pretty early in the morning, but we'll just for the sake of this say that I'm not starting anything until eight. I'll create myself a little slot there at eight. Looks like I'm going to have a little slot here. Uh, let's just leave an hour and a half for Tom. It may not take a full hour and a half, but we'll leave that slot there. There's going to be a slot there. And then we'll say um, after this voice lesson, we'll just sort of say afternoon um, as a way of blocking out the rest of that. Oops, hit the wrong thing there. Afternoon, get my enter first, then I'll click in. So now I have these, these sort of general time blocks where I can slot things in. Uh, and I'll mark those off so you can see it more cleanly. This is the agenda. And in fact, if you want to see it real cleanly, let's just focus on the block. So now we have those general places there. I'm going to shift click next actions, which takes me to my next actions. So now I can look at my next actions and say, all right, what are the things that I can do in those slots? Well, let's imagine that I want to create all videos um, for this. Well, I copy the block reference from over here, right click it, copy the block reference and then paste the reference here. 
so now I'm using uh, the reference, uh, not the uh, actual original link. And of course, in a way, this is also a reference since it's queried in from somewhere else, but that's not technically a reference. It's just it, the query is what's bringing it in. So now this is a reference, and this would take me to the original block um, in the, in the uh, task in the project here if I were to go to that link. And then let's imagine, let's say, well, I'm going to want to uh, upload. I'll be at home in the afternoon, so I'll copy this block reference. I'll upload my videos to Teachable in the afternoon. Um, and then maybe over lunch with my wife, um, we can brainstorm possible destinations for next year's um, vacation. Okay, so now I've got those three things populated. And on a, any, depending on the day, it might there might be more, there might be less. Maybe even in the afternoon, I can say, well, I need to run out and buy a new camera lens in the afternoon. So I'll put that here uh, in the afternoon. So now I've got those things. And three of these things are almost certainly things that I can complete in the day. And if I complete them, I check them off here. Notice it's going to disappear from my next actions because that's linked to that. So either place I were to click it off, it's going to disappear and they're tied in. That's why I use these, these block references. One more example of the amazing power of block references within Roam Research uh, is that you can uh, use them to have tasks that behave normally, uh, behave beautifully when you uh, do this. It's also going to be shown up as checked off in the project because it's all linked together. That does raise a slight problem, though. I mentioned these are things that can be completed relatively easily. This one here, there's a lot of these videos. When I say create them all, that is a task. Uh, now, I could dig it down further, but I don't really need to because I have the process. I don't want to create a separate task for editing every single video or anything like that. So what this means, though, is that this is probably not something I'm going to get done today. And I don't like the idea of having it and just not having anything checked off. So for ongoing tasks, that's my ongoing tag there, what I do is when I copy the block reference, I also put in front of it work on, and I make that separate thing its own to-do. So now it's got two check boxes and a little, uh, little work on uh, uh, text there in front of it. So when I work on it as an ongoing task, I check it there instead of here. To check it here would make it go away in the next list. But I check it there, it says I've worked on it, and when I go to the references for this block, you can see, oh, I did work on it at 8 o'clock on September 21st. So I have that, that flow when I can go back through and see where things fit. Uh, this is how I populate that from that. Um, now, if you go back here, I'll get rid of my next ac actions. I also have Project Archive. So if I shift click that, this is my fail safe. Or excuse me, not archive, active. This is my fail safe. My, my active projects, sometimes if I have forgotten to tag a next action, which happens, uh, but when I have these active tasks, that means, oh, I need to get the wills completed. I didn't have a next action in there. I can go in here. I, I mean, this is my demo graph, so I don't have anything here at all, but I could mark a new next action, and that makes sure that I'm not missing anything. Um, it just is my nice little way when I'm doing the agenda to make sure I'm not losing track of any projects. Uh, it it's, keeps it so that if any next actions slip off the radar, the project will not slip off the radar entirely. So I click that off, and that's my agenda now for the next day. I've got that set up. Everything's set to work. The day is uh, ready when I sit down in front of it.